As we saw in part one, each stepper motor will have a defined step angle associated with it. In the above example, we can see that with two phases, we have a step angle of 90 degrees. If we implement some basic techniques, we can improve the resolution of the motor by decreasing the stepping angle. First, let's discuss full stepping. Here the rotor is rotated at its specified step angle resolution. In the above diagram, two windings are connected to a motor drive circuit, which we will specify as a black box at this point. Later in this presentation, we will look inside this black box. For now though, we will concentrate on the motor windings and the PIC microcontroller. Notice that we are using a simple general purpose input-output port peripheral here, port B, as an example. We will focus our attention to the top four most significant bits in port B for the time being, as the lower four bits are used in the motor drive black box circuit. We will use the nomenclature throughout this presentation by defining each lead of each winding as follows. Winding A leads will be identified by leads A and A prime, while winding B leads will be identified by leads B and B prime. At the top left hand corner of the diagram is our stepping algorithm. Let's step through this algorithm. The first step applies a positive voltage, or logic high, to winding A's lead A while driving lead A prime low. Current is generated in the direction shown, creating a magnetic flux, polarizing the stator poles accordingly. The rotor rotates to minimize the magnetic flux flow reluctance. The next step removes the applied voltage to winding A and drives lead B high, initiating current flow towards lead B prime, which is driven low. Again, the rotor rotates, minimizing the reluctance. Notice as we step through this full step algorithm, we are simply shifting a set bit right each time. Remember though, you will need to connect the motor lead to the appropriate pins to accommodate this algorithm. Continuing through this algorithm, lead A prime is next driven high, followed finally by driving lead B prime high to complete the 360 degree rotation. This type of full step algorithm is referred to as one phase on voltage sequence. The term wave drive is also sometimes used as the voltage sequence resembles a wave. Each lead is energized one at a time for each step. Let's take a moment and talk about speed of revolution, or RPM. We can determine how fast to apply the individual steps by following a few simple equations. First, we need to determine how many steps actually make up a complete 360 degree revolution. In this case, since we have a 90 degree step angle for each individual step, we can say that it will take four steps for a complete revolution. Next, we need to know how many pulses or steps we will apply per second to achieve this desired revolution. Therefore, we divide our desired RPM by 60 seconds and then multiply the quotient by the number of steps in a complete revolution. The product provides us with the number of steps required per second to obtain the desired RPM. We can easily implement the steps per second using timer zero interrupts. We must first configure the timer zero prescaler accordingly and then load a pre-calculated value into the timer zero register that will interrupt the CPU at the appropriate time intervals to perform subsequent steps. Referring to the above flowchart, to implement this in software we must first initialize the two peripherals port B and timer 0 as discussed. We must also define values to pass to the port B register that will produce the desired output sequence as well as define a counter variable. Following peripheral initialization and variable definitions, we simply place the CPU into a loop. On a timer 0 interrupt, the counter variable is incremented, checked, and then used to determine which step value is outputted to the port B register. Remember, if code development is done in C, the counter variable will need to be declared as a global variable. The next full step algorithm is the two phase on bipolar control sequence. In this algorithm, two phases are energized simultaneously to rotate the rotor. Again, in our diagram, the individual leads of windings A and B are connected to the same black box motor drive circuit, which is connected to port B. 
Note that now our stepping algorithm, as shown in the upper left-hand corner of the slide, has changed from the one phase-on algorithm we have just discussed. Driving both leads A and B high while keeping A prime and B prime low produces current flow in both windings, thereby generating a polarity on all stator poles. Notice also that the rotor's pairs are now located between two stator poles as opposed to being lined up with a single stator pole as we saw in the one phase on algorithm. The next step in the algorithm maintains the current flow direction in winding B while reversing the current direction in winding A. This causes the rotor to rotate 90 degrees so that it lies between the next two stator poles. As we continue through the algorithm, current direction through winding A is maintained from the previous step, while this time current direction is changed in winding B. The final step rotates the rotor to its starting position. If we look at the voltage sequence for the two phase on algorithm, we can clearly see that at any given time, current is flowing in both windings. So how does this change our software algorithm? Apart from redefining the step values, the rest of the flow chart remains unchanged. 